Hello YouTubers, welcome to my video, I'm Mr McRaven and um, today we're going to be taking a look at some gaming benchmarks using the latest AMD Pile Driver CPU, the uh, FX8350, codenamed Vishra. So I have a CPU Z open here to uh, show you all that it is indeed an 8350 in here and not anything else. It's uh, currently running at stock with Turbo Core enabled so you will see the, uh, the uh, core speed here uh, fluctuate. So I'm going to run through the uh, system that I use to test these uh, games with and then we'll look over the gaming benchmarks and uh, draw uh, a conclusion at the end. So we know the CPU, uh, the memory used was Kingston uh, Genesis HyperX, uh, 16 gigs DDR3 running at 1600 megahertz and there's the uh, clocks there for you and that was at 1.65 volts. Uh, the motherboard used is an Asus Sabertooth 990FX with the latest 1604 BIOS. Um, the operating system and games uh, were run off a 120 gig um, SSD, an OCZ Agility 3 SSD. And uh, moving on to the graphics card used is an Asus DirectCU2 GTX 580. Uh, this is a factory overclock card. Uh, the core runs 10 megahertz higher than a reference card, which is 782 megahertz there, and the shade is at 1564 and a memory at 1002. So it is slightly overclocked, but uh, this will make a great deal of difference in games. It's only a, probably a, a case of one, maybe two frames, if uh, if that, with that overclock. So uh, if you're running a slightly lesser card, then you'll have to kind of roughly calculate how many less frames uh, you'd be getting in similar games. Uh, but if you have a better setup or crossfire, then you'll be looking at an increase uh, in the frame rate. So before we begin, this uh, this uh, benchmark, this video isn't about a uh, who's better for gaming, AMD or Intel. It's not about that. This is just to show you uh, how good or how bad uh, this new CPU from AMD can perform uh, in games. So it's purely for informational reason. So before we begin I will tell you that I used Fraps which was installed on the uh, SSD and that was recording the benchmarks to a separate hard drive so as not to affect performance too much. It was calculated using three runs at uh, one minute per run each time and then the average was calculated between the three runs. So. Uh, it was actually run twice because I've tested at stock and I've also tested at uh, 4.5 gigahertz overclocked um, as well so to see the comparison between a stock uh, 8350 and a overclocked one to see the uh, performance difference. So we're going to look now at uh, some charts that I put together in a quick video and we're going to look at the um, results so if I bring this up here so we're going to start off by having a look at Battlefield 3. Everything was set uh, to the maximum there, and we can see the minimum frame rate. Uh, there's a uh, 10 frames difference there, and the maximum is up a bit, and uh, even the average is up a little bit. Although the frame rate isn't a huge increase, uh, the gameplay was a lot smoother than it had been previously on an 8120. So we can see there, there was a minimum of 24% increase in uh, frame rates and 20% uh, in the maximum frame rate and 5% in the average frame rate. Moving on to Bad Company 2, same resolution, maxed it out as much as I could. The frame rates were pretty much the same throughout this uh, test. Uh, gameplay was smooth on uh, both settings, so not a huge change there for Bad Company 2. So we're going to move on and have a look at the percentage increase. So as you can see, very little, there was no change in the minimum frame rate and only a 1.7% increase uh, in the maximum frame rate and a 3.4% increase in the average frame rate. So Borderlands 2, which takes uh, use of physics, so maximum settings and physics were set to as high as possible. And the minimum frame rate is 31 on the stock and 43 on overclock, uh, 90 and 87 on the maximum, 64 and 58 on the average. So let's take a look at the percentage increase. You see a 27% increase in the minimum frame rate when uh, overclocked, 3.3% in the maximum and 9% increase on the average. Okay, so we're on to Crisis now, a popular game that was uh, 
to test with and we can see a frame rate increase in the minimum again from 29 up to 38 the maximum from 57 to 61 and 48 to 49 so the maximum and the average staying roughly the the same but the minimum frame rate uh, has certainly increased by 23 percent the maximum is increased by 6.5 and the average frame rate is about two percent better when overclocked Okay, so we're on to Dead Space 2 now at the same resolutions, maximum details, and you can see the frame rate is uh, quite high on this game. Uh, so we see the minimum jump up from 107 to 147, so that's 40 FPS more, and the maximum uh, 301 over 285, and 205 over 172. So there was some quite good performance increase there, as you can see, 27% on the minimum, 5% on the maximum frame rate, and 16% on the average frame rate. Moving on uh, to Need for Speed Shift 2 Unleashed. Again, maximum settings possible, V-Sync was t disabled. Uh, we can see a small increase in the minimum frame rate, 71 to 76. Maximum pretty much the same, and the average uh, only a few extra frames there as well. So if we take a look at the percentages, the minimum frame rate increased by 6%, the maximum by 1.6, and the average frame rate increased by 5.3. So each of these games so far is showing some uh, increases. Okay, now here's one that's more CPU dependent. It's Skyrim, uh, one with 8 times anti-aliasing, 16 AF, and 3 high definition texture mods. We can see the minimum frame rate, which is great here, has increased from 29 frames to 50. Uh, the maximum 144, 122, 92 and 78. So the average and the minimum frame rates on this game have uh, improved greatly. So 42% increase in the minimum and 15 increase in the maximum and average frame rates. So that is great if you're a Skyrim player. And looking at the overall performance gains uh, from overclocking, the 8350, at 4.51, 1.36 volts, we see a 21% increase in the minimum FPS a 7% uh, increase in the maximum and a 7% increase in the average FPS. So having a look uh, through those benchmarks um, we can see that uh, a stock uh, 8350 performs quite well and will be an improvement over previous bulldozer generation and possibly uh, some Phenom 2 generation CPUs but when we push the uh, overclock up by uh, what is relatively a small overclock up to 4.5 we can see that there is a, a substantial gain from overclocking this uh, CPU uh, during uh, gameplay. Now I haven't included as many games as I have, I've included seven games that uh, uh, are a variety of different types. Some of them are more popular than others like Battlefield 3. So by all means there are some games that I have missed out that might be more taxing uh, but uh, this is just an indicative um, benchmark to show you what you can expect uh, if you're looking to purchase a 8350. So we've looked at the benchmarks and uh, I've drawn my own conclusions uh, from this CPU. I had previously a FX8120 uh, which I had overclocked at 4.3 gigahertz uh, with the same GPU, same memory, same motherboard and uh, the performance was still reasonable um, but there was occasionally stutter in uh, like Battlefield 3 for example uh, with this uh, CPU even on stock the stutter has gone it's a lot smoother it um, requires less power um, than the previous bulldozer, bulldozer uh, chips so overall I'm uh, quite pleased um, with uh, the results um, with this uh, CPU and I, I could quite uh, fully recommend it uh, as a gaming CPU. I know there will be lots of arguments in the comments box about how Intel is much better and um, I'll leave that uh, to you guys but uh, if you do run an AMD system and you're currently looking to upgrade to an 8350 I can thoroughly recommend it and you can uh, uh, re uh, rewind this video and take a look at the benchmarks again just to see uh, just how good it did perform uh, in uh, those games. So uh, you might want to check out uh, the video that I'll be putting up soon on my review of the 8350 and how I think it fares um, to find out uh, what I think, uh, if it's worth it or not. Um, I won't be doing any benchmarks on uh, synthetics uh, like uh, 3D Mark, uh, things like that, because I believe it doesn't really show 
uh, real world performance but it gives an indication so I won't be doing that uh, at the moment so I hope this video has proved uh, helpful to somebody um, by all means leave your comments in the comments box below click like subscribe if you want to see more and um, if you're looking to upgrade to this uh, CPU you're gonna have a lot of fun uh, playing around with it so until then until the next video uh, goodbye for now and uh, catch you next time